Hey everyone, this is a video just going through the we do part of practice number one, which we're doing on uh, Wednesday, February 23rd. So um, for this one, the directions aren't the best ever, but basically we want to find out as much information as we can. So if there's X's and Y's, we want to find them. Um, if there's missing angles that we can find, missing sides that we can find, we want to fill those in. So um, number one, the shape that we have there is a kite. In fact, one, two, and three look to all be kites. So kites, we just need to remember uh, a couple things. We need to remember um, in terms of angles that these angles that are across from each other uh, in that direction are going to be congruent. So kites, that's one of the properties of kites. They have one set of congruent angles. So if the left side is 88 degrees, then the right side is also 88 degrees. Like so, okay? Um, and how do we know that? We know that because um, the angles that we, we have there that are congruent, they are between these kind of symmetrical sets of sides. So we have one tick mark on top, one tick mark on, or two tick marks on bottom, one tick mark on top, two tick marks on bottom. So squeezed between those, we are going to find ourselves some congruent angles. Okay. Now the question is, how do we find this angle S down here? I'm going to give it three marks. Um, that's our question. Well, now we got to go back to kind of the last unit where we know that if a uh, shape has four sides, um, it's going to have four minus two times 180 degrees for the interior angles. So basically that's going to be two times 180, which is 360 degrees. So all four angles should add up to 360 degrees. So what we need to do is take 360, subtract 88, subtract another 88, and subtract 107. So I'm going to grab a calculator and do that. 360 minus 88 minus 88 minus 107. And we're going to get 77 degrees. Like so. And there's really not a whole lot we can do at that point to find missing sides. Um, I guess if we really wanted to, um, we could maybe go and try to use some trigonometry, but um, I think that's kind of kind of beyond what we're going to cover in this class. So since we weren't given any of the sides, we're not, we're not going to deal with any more there. Okay, uh, moving on to number two. So once again, we have these two angles that um, are kind of across from each other. They definitely look like they're congruent. Um, they're definitely the si the angles that are between these, what I like to call like symmetrical sets of sides. So you got one tick mark and two tick marks, the angle in between. One tick mark, two tick marks, the angle in between. So those, those two angles are going to be congruent to each other. So we're going to set up a little equation that says just that. 2x plus 1 equals 5x minus 13. And we're going to solve it. So I like to try to keep my x's positive if at all possible. So I'm going to start by subtracting 2x from both sides. Now I'm going to have 1 equals 3x minus 13. And I'm going to add 13 to both sides. And we're going to end up with 14 equals 3x. Divide by 3. Divide by 3. And we are not going to get a nice whole answer here, but that's okay. We don't always get perfect answers in math, so we're going to do 14 divided by 3. And about 4.67. So x is approximately 4.67. Okay, um, so now the question is, what, what are those angles? Well, we need to take that answer and substitute it back in. And not just in one place, but I would substitute it in to both places. So 2x plus 1 and 5x plus 13. So 2x plus 1. And the other one was 5x minus 13. So 5, substitute that value in minus 13. And you'll see that we get very similar answers.
10.33333. We'll just say 10.33. Okay, so each of these angles is 10.33 degrees, which this is not a very good problem, if I'm going to be honest, because those angles do not look like they're 10.33 degrees. But we're going to go with it. We're going to go with uh, what the numbers say, not with uh, what they actually look like in this case. Okay, and then to solve for this angle down here, I'm going to give it two marks. We need to do the whole 360 minus thing. So... We know that all four should add up to 360, so let's subtract what we have. We have a 10.33, another 10.33, and then the angle that we were given on top was 48 degrees. So I'll grab that calculator. 360 minus 10.33 minus another 10.33 minus 48 and 291.34. Okay, again, I do not love this problem. This angle does not look anywhere close to 291.34 degrees, but that's the that's what the math told us, so we'll go with it. All right, moving on to example three. Uh, we don't have much information about the angles here, so we're not going to worry about the angles. We're just going to find as many missing sides as we can. Okay, so we have a kite. Uh, properties of kites tell us that these two sides that I just made red are going to be congruent, and these two sides that I'm going to make green are congruent. Okay. Uh, we also have some more information here. We have 3 and 10, and 3, 10 there. Uh, we can make 90 degree angles in here. Okay, um, so solving for x, that one's going to be really, really easy. It's basically right in front of our face. x is equal to 8. Done. Okay, solving for y is going to be more work. Um, the reason is we also don't know what the side that's congruent to y is over there, that other green side. So what we need to do for this one is we need to realize that we have a right triangle right here. And I'm just going to take what I just drew there and kind of separate it out. That little right triangle there, it has sides of 3, 10, and y. Okay, we have a tool for that, Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We've done lots of that this year. So 3 squared plus 10 squared equals y squared. So 9 plus 100 equals y squared. So 109 equals y squared. And then we can take the square root of both sides. So I'm going to grab a calculator and do the square root of 109. Square root 109, and we get about 10.44. So y is approximately 10.44. Um, I'm going to add that to the diagram, like so. And I think that's really all we need to find there. Uh, we could, if we really wanted to, we could use the Pythagorean theorem again to find that little blue side there, but it didn't ask us to do that, so I don't think we're going to do it. But we could do the same thing. We could make a right triangle there, and then we would have 3 and 8, and then we'd be solving for what we would maybe call little a. So a little extra fun if you wanted to do that, but not necessary. All right, numbers 4, 5, and 6, we're moving away from kites. Um, moving on to number four, which is a square. Squares are kind of nice um, because they have congruent sides. So maybe we'll start with y. 5y plus 16 is equal to 10y minus 29. We have our little tick marks here. So it's just a matter of setting those equal to one another and solving. So 5y plus 16 equals 10y minus 29. And again, I'm going to try to keep the variables positive, so I'm going to subtract the smaller one from both sides. We'll add 29 now to both sides, and that's going to give us 45. Divide by 5, so 9 is equal to y. Okay, now that we have that, 
let's substitute it back in. Okay, so over, over on the left, we have 5 times 9, which is 45. And 45 plus 16 is going to be 61. And then on the right side, we have 10 times 9 is 90. And 90 minus 29 is also 61. So that's good. Okay, that means that all of our sides are 61 because it's a square. Okay. Um, then for x, when I first look at the, looked at this, it took me a second to figure out what they were asking. They're asking for this angle right here. Okay, so to do that, we need to remember that in a square, the diagonals bisect the angles. And the original angles were all 90 degrees, which means that each of these little angles here are all 45s, 45 degrees all the way around. So that means that our little angle that we're looking for is equal to 45 degrees. So for our equation, we're going to do 6x plus 21 equals 45. And we're going to solve that. And that one will be a little less work. Subtract 21. So 6x is equal to 24. Divide by 6. And x is equal to 4. And you could totally check your work there. You can take your 4 substitute it back in for x. So 6 times 4 is 24. 24 plus 21 is 45 degrees. Smiley face. Done. 5 is a trapezoid. And it looks like we are dealing with the midpoint as well as the bases. And I wish that this diagram came with some parallel lines so that we actually knew it was a trapezoid. So let's add those on there before we do anything. Okay. Uh, in order to solve for x on this one, we need to use a little equation. And the little equation is this. Your midline is always equal to 1 half times the sum of your bases. So 1 half times base 1 plus base 2. Well, what the heck are all of those things? Base 1, I usually put that one on the bottom. And base 2, I usually put that on top. The order really doesn't matter, though. You could do 1 on top, 2 on the bottom, whatever you like. Okay, your midline is the one that's in the middle. Midline, right there. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, so to figure out what x is, we just need to substitute those three things into our formula. So where midline was, we're going to replace that with 20. And where b1 is, we're going to replace that with 7x minus 5. And where b2 is, we're going to replace that was 17. And then it's just an equation that needs solving. So the first thing that we should probably do is combine some like terms. So negative 5 plus 17 is going to give us a positive 12. So 20 equals 1 half 7x plus 12. Okay, now you have some options. You could, if you wanted to, you could distribute that 1 half. Um, you could do this. If you want, I don't love doing that um, because then we're going to get seven halves, which is kind of ugly. Um, not my favorite way to do it. So how I like to do it, and really I do this anytime I have a fraction that I don't like, multiply by the denominator. So multiply by two. Okay, and that will eliminate your fraction. One half times two is just one. So you can get rid of those. But don't forget to do it to the other side. If we multiplied by two on the right, we need to multiply by two on the left. Okay, so now we have 20 times 2, which is 40, equals, these parentheses not really helping us anymore, so let's ditch them. And now we're to a point where it's getting pretty easy to solve. Subtract 12 from both sides, that's going to give us 28. Divide by 7, and we get 4. x equals 4. Okay, I like checking these. That was a lot of algebra. I want to make sure we did it correctly. So I'm going to take that 4 and substitute it back in. So 7 times 4 is 28. 28 minus 5 is 23. Okay, and a lot of times these are going to make a lot of sense. You're asking yourself, is 20 exactly halfway between 17 and 23? So to get from 17 to 20, you have to add 3. And to get from 20 to 23, you have to add 3. So yes, 20 is exactly halfway um, between. So I think, I think we're done with that problem. So on to uh, number 6 here. This is kind of an easier one, I think. Not a lot of algebra to do here. 
Um, what we do need to realize is that we're working with a trapezoid that has parallel sides. So what that tells us about the angles is that we have consecutive interior angles. Hopefully you remember that from earlier this year, consecutive interior angles. And the deal with those is that they add to 180 degrees. They're supplementary if your lines are parallel. And our lines are parallel. So that tells us that these two angles here should add up to 180 degrees. Okay, so all we really need to do is 180 take away 115, and that's going to be what 65. I sure did that right. Yep, 65 degrees there. Okay, and then you got options uh, for angle G up top there. You can either do 360 take away 115, take away 65, take away 66, or you can do consecutive interior angles going kind of the other way so we still have parallel lines we can make a backward c um, so basically this one and this one are going to equal 180 so we can just do 180 take away 66 so that's going to be 114 degrees i need to double check that <laughs> 180 minus 66 i think that's right 114. We're good. All right. So you guys go ahead and uh, do the ones on the back side of that sheet. They're very similar to the ones that we just did.